good evening. Um, today I'm going to be doing a brief uh, introduction to animation in 3D Studio Max. I'm using version 2010. Uh, now, a quick note before I begin. The primary goal of this tutorial is uh, to provide an introduction for beginners to the program. Specifically, it was created for a request which I received over MSN. So, if you've already seen the rest of my tutorials and you already have a good understanding of 3D Studio Max, um, you probably don't need to watch this. Um, so, let's um, continue then. Let's we'll open up 3D Studio Max here. Alright, so I'm going to take you through a few of the basics of animation. First off, we just need to create some kind of subject to be animated. So, let's go with plane. So we'll just draw out a basic plane here. And make a box over it. Now, um, the first method I'm going to demonstrate here is called uh, keyframe, or rather auto keyframe animation. This is basically where we take our box and head into move. First off, down here though, we have our animation controls. The time slider pretty much allows you to scrub through the frames. And you've got set key here, set a keyframe in your animation, and auto P, which is what I'm going to be using now, demonstrating to you all. Um, here you've got our animation controls, play, start, etc. You're probably familiar with that already. Um, so I'm going to show you how to create a very, very simple animation. So if you just grab our um, scrub bar here, and set it at whatever frame we want our animation to end. In this case, it'll be frame 100. So we'll just check, uh, click the auto key button here and drag the box to the final point in our animation. Now, you'll notice when we click auto key, the frame here around your windows turns red, indicating auto key mode is now enabled. So if we head back to the beginning, as I've done, and play our animation, you'll see that the box is now animated and will move towards its final position. Now, there are many ways to manipulate this. For example, if we want to make this a curved animation, we can create keyframes in the middle of our animation. In fact, this is how many animations are completed. So, for example, if we wait until frame 30, that is just over one second in, depending on your region, and move the box over here, you'll notice a keyframe has now been created in the middle, or rather close to the middle of our animation. And that if we head back to the beginning and play again, the animation is now curved as the box moves over to one side, then returns to its original path for the final keyframe. And towards the end, for example, frame 75, or earlier, about here, if we move our box over to this side, we can again curve the animation. So you will notice now, before completing its animation, the box will slide to both sides. Now, an easy way to manipulate this is using a system which 3ds Max calls trajectories. This essentially draws a physical, or rather a visible path from point A to point B which you can use to track where your object is going. This can be extremely useful in scenes where you have many objects and need to observe the path, path of each one. To enable this feature, go into the Motion tab here, and if you look here, under Parameters, select Trajectories, you will see that we can view the trajectory for this particular mesh. Now, there are many things you can do to make this animation more smooth or more rough, depending on what you need. In this instance, we are going to change some of the, the keyframes, the interpolation of the keyframes. If you select this keyframe, for example, or rather even the first keyframe, you will notice we have two values here for it under the Motion tab, In and Out. In essentially means that as the slider reaches a certain key point here, 
this is how it will be affected as it moves towards it. In this case, as our bar moves closer to this keyframe, the object slows and prepares to move in another direction. So, on this basis, if we change this particular setting, move to that keyframe, change the setting to linear, we will see the box no longer slows down in reaching its destination. You'll also notice that it has now changed the size of the trajectory, or rather the scope of the trajectory. If we now change the out zone to linear, you will notice that our animation has now returned to its original shape. However, the curve in the path is now far more pronounced. Various keyframes can be set to different configurations in terms of our interpolation individually. So now if we resume our animation, we will see that the first keyframe proceeds smoothly. The second is linear. We can also, of course, change the y-axis of our keyframe, or rather the z-axis as it is called here. So, if we now resume, we see that the box will now increase in height as it reaches that point in the animation. This is how much of your animation 3D Studio Max will be done. For very complex animations, there are features such as Reactor, which is essentially a real-time physics system, or you can do more complicated stuff sorts such as spline paths. I'm going to take you through how spline path is created now. If we just refresh our scene, okay, so let's draw it another plane. And we're going to adjust the width of this plane to accommodate the size of our animation. And zoom out. In our front viewport here, we can see our plane. So, for this to work properly, we're going to head into the Shapes tab here and choose Line. Now, our animation is going to start here and move in this direction. So, position our line here and draw the shape of your animation. That will do for the moment. Now, this may not look that complex, however it can be a vital tool for creating complex animations. To demonstrate this, we're going to create an object, a sphere in this example. Position our sphere here, and if we head into the motion tab for the sphere, we can choose the plus button beside assign parameter or rather assign controller and under position click the assign controller box and choose path constraint then click OK. Now we can see that two free key, two keyframes have been created here. If we move the frames further along nothing happens. Okay, so we need to add our path. In case you haven't quite caught, caught on to this already, this line here is our path. In other words, this line is going to be converted to animation data. The sphere will follow the line. So, add path. We will choose our spline. And now, we have a target and a weight. So if we move our frames for our bar here, we'll find that the sphere will now follow this line. Right to the end. Now, depending on the complexity of your animation, you also have other functions such as percent along path. This allows you to choose where the sphere begins the animation from. 